We'll call and raise up a what? Can't hear you. Because nothing is truly yours until you understand it. I got to end your face anointing. If you can't take this, you're not supposed to be here. I used trying to down it. I used to go, kind of, well, I want to sugarcoat it and all of that. I ain't got time for that. This is not the time for it. Let me tell y'all why. Sit down. Let me tell you why it's not the time. I'm going to tell you why it's not the time. Somebody handed this to me after the men's locker room. I didn't get a chance to read it until Tuesday morning before my prayer time. After I read it, I, 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 I immediately went to Columbia to go hang out with my son all day. A breakfast with him. Then he went to school. I hung around, went and worked out in a stadium at Mizzou, ran the stairs, and then we went to dinner, and then I came back because of a letter. Good evening to brothers of the men's locker room. I would like to start and say I have been very angry with everything around me. For those that see me and don't know me, and for those that know me and still don't see me. The last church I went to, I felt like a blimp on a radar screen. I sat in a balcony and felt like a nobody. So I decided the next church I attend, I would, would make my church home. I wanted to be known or to feel a part of something. So my family and I found ways to get involved. I joined the Christmas play as the director of the play within the play. That made me feel a part of something. But that only lasted a few weeks. Then I started coming to the men's locker room. It was different, I must say, but I felt a part of something. So let's fast forward a little bit. I'm raising two boys to become men. I kept them away from the streets. I raised them to be good guys, whether at school or out in the world. On July 19th of this year, my firstborn, 21 years of age, went to the park and decided the world would be better without him. He took his life. From the outside, from the outside look, he was a very happy young man. Had a great job, bought his first car, had tons of friends. The only thing I can say, he couldn't find a lady that truly loved him. Had some bad breakups. I guess he felt unwanted. Losing him has totally changed everything about me. My mind can't grasp the why or the what, the reason behind this. The day before we were laughing and telling each other how much we loved each other. So, so for the first couple of weeks, we were surrounded with family and friends showing love. But now time has passed. And it's back to no one cares. The one thing that gets me when people say, if you need anything, call me. I'm there. How do you respond to that? Do you tell them that due to losing your firstborn son, all of a sudden you're almost $33,000 in the hole? <coughs> in the red? <laughs> you're barely living from check to check? to feel like you're falling in life now. I don't want to let down my wife and son I have left and other family members. I'm a very good handy man. I've been working in maintenance for the past 20 years. I can build houses, rebuild, remodel, upgrade. I know how to flip houses as well. But I started a business in my son's name. I started a construction company in my son's name. I've had doors open. I should say I've, I, I've had every door or window shut in my face. So now I feel like I'm feeling him again. Every Thursday I go see a therapist and for the moment feel okay. But once I leave, I'm back in my mind thinking of my son with the same question, why? I feel like I have nothing and can't figure it out. If I just get my foot in the door or window, I know I can change my entire life. But for some reason, 
God has taken my son, and I've already told him God didn't take his son. The devil did that. I haven't stopped believing in faith. My mind and heart barely, badly, and I wish it will, my, I'm sorry. I don't know which way to turn. I haven't stopped believing in faith. My mind and heart hurts badly, and I wish it will go away. Thanks for listening. There's so much more I can say, but I don't have time. Pastor, why'd you read that? Man, you made us all say it. No, hopefully, I put in you a sense of urgency. While you're sitting around, letting pastor preach, leave here, don't say anything to anybody, don't get to know somebody new, we're the body of Christ. Leaving here, just wanting to preach Bible, Instead of give love, be sensitive to God's spirit, who he have you go up to, say hello. Because if people are going to come here, they're going to be changed because of their experience. I can't go into detail, but I had, I mean, I, I, I had to make this week one of the most difficult calls I've ever had to make in ministry. Can't go into details about it, but it was highly difficult. So I'm saying all of this to say, I don't mind you shouting and all of that. But we got a mandate. We got a mandate to get people out of mediocrity. To get people out of being indifferent. Get people out of being stagnant. Staying broke. Seeing your kids. Don't know what to say. Those days over. And I'm telling you, every one of your children, your grandchildren, your great-grands, they're going to run with the Lord. Amen. I can't hear you. 